right, you lot, we are back. Now, in this video, we are going to be exploring and investigating the UK's most infamous UFO crash site. Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk County, England. 200 miles east of Rudlow Manor lies six square miles of woodlands that has become notorious as the site of Great Britain's most incredible UFO encounter. On December 26, 1980, near an airbase leased to the United States Air Force by the RAF, strange lights are reported on the horizon in what appears to be a possible downed aircraft. Two U.S. servicemen are dispatched to the site. According to accounts, radios failed as they approached the targeted area. The men observed a strange triangular craft on the ground approximately three meters wide at its base. With these initial details in mind, it was now time for us to prepare ourselves. Tim foil, okay? That's the top bit. <laughs> wait, wait, still. <laughs> oh no! Wait, you need to secure? I need to like lip it under here a bit. Okay. So this bit almost needs to go round here. <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> there you go, no. Oh, we close! <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Peniston later he said he walked around it and he said this took place over a 45 minute period. And then what I remember was it went up in the air and then left. If the encounter ended here, it would have likely been written off by the press as bored servicemen working on base during the Christmas holiday, attempting to have some fun. But it's what happens in the next 24 hours that makes the Rendlesham Forest incident the most famous UFO event in British history. That's because, on the following evening, Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Halt and a small team of military investigators head out to examine the site where Penniston and Burroughs had reported seeing the UFO. All right, mate, so night time is settling in. It's time to see whether there's any remnants of alien activity and whether the aliens may be returning tonight. Let's do this. Mate, what the fuck is that? I don't know. What the fuck are they? Mate? Wait, what are they? Hello? Oh, is it a fence? Yeah. It's a fence. Oh! Oh, God! Okay, we're now approaching here. What looks like a blasted or scrubbed up area here. Right away, the investigators find evidence of damaged trees. There's a round abrasion on the tree, about uh, three and a half, four inches diameter, three and a half feet off the ground. Each one of these trees is facing at a blast, what we assume is a landing site, all out of the bridge and facing in the same direction towards the center. So this is the exact trail that those army officers took to encounter the UFO. We are retracing their exact steps. We are penetrating deeply. What's that? What is that? What is that? Wait, prof. No fucking no, no, way. No, 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 Mate. No way. What the fuck is that? No. No way. Mate, is that a recreation of it? No way. Shut the. This is the site, mate. Get your hat back on. No! 
They might be watching. Oh, bro, these are the signs. What? These must be the signs you were talking about. And so the men looked at this strange object. I noticed that there was an inscription on the side of the uh, aircraft. I was expecting to find, uh, I don't know, USAF, uh, something like that. And what I find is glyphs, uh, pictorial glyphs, making no sense at all. And then I was running my hand over the side of the craft. It was very warm to touch. At this time, we were getting the feeling of electricity that was just bouncing. It was much, much stronger. There was this feeling of being drawn into it or being pulled into it. Like someone was holding a picture of, of zeros and ones in my mind's eye. After establishing that this was the exact location where the officers saw the UFO, we thought it would be a good idea to get a thumbnail photo next to the UFO reconstruction. I wonder though, would it be worth taking a flash photo? Yeah. I, don't, I think that might work better. What happens next? I, I can't work it out, right? Have a look. Uh, sorry, look at this. Wait. What's this then? By the signs. What is that? It's not... That's not like a moth, is it? No. Sorry. What the fuck? What is it? Is it? Wait, go on, sh shine it. There's nothing there. But look there. at the other photo. It's not in the other photo. Wait. You want me? Wait. Oh my god. What the fuck, mate? That's not right. What? And then it's gone. Yeah. No way. No way. It's like a li little figure. I don't, yeah, I don't like even a, know. It's like a little bit of energy. I don't, I can't, because it did, I don't know, mate. I really don't know. That's almost like something's floating like here. That's so weird, mate. If that was something that just flew in front of the camera, that would be totally blown out and all blurred. Like, wait, it's far too detailed to be something that's right in front of the lens, yes. which is where it'd have to be to be lit up like that. That is next to the craft, mate. It's got too much of like a solid edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mate, that's fucking weird. It's like it... a little puff of smoke or something, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like, what the fuck is that? Now, I've put this in Photoshop to see if I can adjust the highlights and brightness, etc., to see what it looks like. And as you can see, it's more solid in the middle and goes like translucent round the edges. I can't think of a bug or fly that looks like that. Now for what makes this even weirder. Uh, well, you'd only describe as children at that time. I wasn't the only one that did it. Some other people said I thought these were children. And uh, they had uh, four or four and a half feet tall, above the ground, very bright, translucent at points. You couldn't see the lower extremities but you could clearly see the face and it wasn't human. After they conduct this search and assessment of the radioactivity levels, most spectacularly of all, we hear on tape Colonel Holt and his team encounter the UFO themselves. Lieutenant Colonel Halt's voice becomes noticeably stressed. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, I see it too. What is it? We don't know, sir. Is there some type of strange flashing light ahead? It is definitely coming this way. Two pieces of it are shooting off. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. Okay, we're going to do what we can now to call out to the aliens. Calling out to all aliens. We come very peacefully and we would like you to show us a sign that you are here. Please do so now.
if there are aliens here watching over us, can you just show us a sign, make a noise, maybe show us a light? Maybe our hats are too strong. Maybe it is the hats. Okay. Okay, aliens, we've taken our hats off. Please do your utmost to connect with us by showing a light. Big flash. Unsuccessful in our attempt to connect with extraterrestrials, I think it's now important to address what makes this entire investigation completely mental. So, referring back to the first night of this UFO incident, when James Penniston placed his hand over the glyphs he saw on the side of the craft, he reported seeing ones and zeros in a certain formation clearly in his mind's eye following the event, and so wrote them all down on a notepad. Years later, a computer programmer took this information, ran it through a translation program, and a message emerged. The message read, Exploration of humanity, continuous for planetary advance, eyes of your eyes, origin year 8100. When one sees origin year 8100, one is forced to speculate, might we be looking not just at extraterrestrials, but time travelers from the future? Now, we've seen various evidence of time travel over the years, scientists proven that it is theoretically possible. And to take this a step further, at the time of this UFO incident at the US Army base next to Rendlesham Forest, they were storing nuclear weapons. And this was at the time of the Cold War, which was USA versus the Soviet Union. Could these alien beings have been trying to communicate to deter and interrupt humanity from destroying itself? Another thing is we can obviously only see like a very small amount of the spectrum. If you look at this graph, yeah, that's visible light to us. You've got UV, infrared, so many other types of energy that we can't sense. What's to say aliens, spirits, whatever, don't appear in our eye or to our senses, but are all around us? 100%. Not to mention the countless unexplainable structures built thousands of years ago all over the world, sharing similar architecture, insane precision, and made with materials weighing over a hundred tons each. The only way that this could be possible is if they all had the same architect. With the lack of technology and transport, who could that have been? These pyramids are also said to have been utilized as power sources, and they also have the exact same layout as a modern day motherboard chip of a computer. As for this case, governments have tried to play it down as merely a lighthouse. These trained army officials over a three day period apparently confused all of this for a lighthouse that was six miles away. Right. What do you believe? And let us know which alien case you think we should travel to and investigate next. Adios. Yeah, <laughs>